Coming to you from Chicago, Illinois, this is Michael Herkus, the Glam Witch. Are you ready for real talk with real witches? Well, join me as I talk to some of my favorite friends and others in the magical community. From crystal healing to cooking magic, love spells and glamour, astrology, divination, and more. I've got you covered. This is the Glam Witch Gab. Magical moments with friends. So grab your broom and come into my room for a little bit of magic. Hi everyone, Michael Herc is here. Welcome to the Glam Witch Gab, my new web series where I talk to a bunch of different friends in the magical community about pressing topics that I find near and dear. Today, I'm really excited to have on my friend, Michelle Guerrero Dennison, who is also a contributing writer to Which Way Magazine, has done a lot of their lives and has a wonderful, wonderful Instagram page, uh, Glitter in the Dirt, um, which is just so fantastic because I am the representation of glitter. So I naturally gravitated towards this lovely, lovely human being. Um, so without further ado, welcome, Michelle. Um, so hi, I am Michelle Guerrero Dennison. Um, I'm a... I guess a kitchen witch or a green witch, however you, you feel comfortable saying it, I'm just me. Um, and I live in Southern California. I'm the mother of two amazing kids. And um, I'm a very simple person, but um, I, I think that that kind of encapsulates me. I spend about 60% of my life in my kitchen creating things and crafting things and um, about the other 20% taking pictures of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So I wanted to have you on to talk a lot about self-love. Um, I think that that's something that you definitely emulate um, through a lot of your posts um, and just are just such a lovely energy that I just think that we need more of in the world. Um, so how, now you had mentioned before that you are um, a kind of a kitchen witch. And I know you're so good with herbs and I want to get into like herbs for self-love a little bit later on and stuff. Um, but why did uh, like self-love become such an important um, part to your life? Like how do you view self-love and how do you work that into your magic? Oh my God. Well, I think for me, it was a real long journey. Yeah. You know, I grew up in the 80s when being um, a chubby kind of brown kid was not super popular. And so I spent most of my life being told um, I changed the way I looked, if I changed um, my weight, if I, if I talked less, if I had fewer opinions, et cetera, like just all of those things um, that I would be better. And then, you know, I'll tell you the absolute truth. I always thought I was pretty awesome. I didn't understand why the world didn't understand that. Yeah. But after a while, you start to believe that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't even have a concept of what self-love was until maybe eight or nine years ago when the idea, like I had just lived my life with, with zero concern for myself, except for like the hedonistic, like I just wanted to have fun in the moment and, and feel good, but that's not really living. Um, that's filling voids, right? Like with drinking, with sex, yeah. with accomplishment. The situation and yeah. And so um, I it was it was through um, a friend of mine, um, a couple friends of mine in the plus size community that I had kind of gravitated towards. Um, this idea of self love started being tossed around, and I was like, what? And at first. I, I thought something that I think a lot of people think about self-love is that, I, again, I thought it was this 
indulgence. And that certainly can be a component, but that's not what it is. Like, and so it took about five years of, of self-soothing to be able to really do the work that is called for in self-love because it is work. And, um, and that I found, um, that's where my magic lived too. Like I work with herbs and plants. Absolutely. But my power, my, what, whatever, my joie de vivre, my magic, my whatever, it really stems from inside of me. I don't really call to an outside source for that. I feel a connection, but, um, and it took, I, I have, um, I said something years ago and um, I try and like quoting yourself is the most pretentious thing I think that a person can do, but I do it all the time. Um, and it was, um, that, yeah, well, you know, sometimes we're brilliant. Uh, it's, a witch who doubts herself works with borrowed power at best. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the foundation for my self love. Like you've got to buy into yourself. Um, but to do that, there's a very long road that it takes to get there for most of us. Yeah. That was a very easy explanation. No, I get it. I, I mean, my, I would say my self love is probably, it was something that developed probably in the last five to four years. Um, you know, growing up as a teenager, uh, 20 something, uh, 20 years ago ish, I mean, still, it was not a lovely experience being this little feminine gay boy, um, constantly taunted, constantly made fun of all of the time, believing that it was horrible. And then growing up and coming into a gay community that's like, I'm like, oh my God, finally I have, I have gay people, but at the same time, then they hate anything feminine. So it was like, con then I'm like getting attacked by my own community just as much as I am from the outside force. Um, and so I kind of like went up through a couple of different transitions where I tried to like redefine who I was according to what society kind of wanted me to. Um, and like, I joke about it and I say all the time, like, I'm never going to wear plaid again. I'm never going to do it because there was this whole chunk of my life where I was with a partner who just wanted me to wear plaid and like khakis and just polos and just be like that. And Abercrombie and Fitch. And it's just not me. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was, I would say about like five something years ago, I, I just kind of, I started to remove certain people from my life that were holding me back, um, that were creating that type of doubt and not necessarily loving me, not having my best interests at heart. And once I stripped that all away and kind of became more alone, um, I was able to go back to kind of the fun person I used to be before everyone started changing me who, into what they thought I should be. Um, and then uh, voila, this is what has been created. And um, I love it. But I also agree with what you were saying too. Like I work with crystals and herbs and clearly clothing and all of these things. And it's kind of that, um, like I'm using you for a relationship type of a thing to, to not just completely use your energy and manipulate it, but to interweave it with mine uh, mm -hmm. in a way, because it all stems from the power within. That's oh. the only tool that you're going to need. Everything else is complete whatever. I say that a lot of times with glamour magic too. It's not like necessarily if you, if you're in a room full of people, the one that's going to charm your pants off is not really going to be the one that's usually a Victoria's Secrets model or like a Chippendale model. It's going to be someone who has that charisma and that personality from the inside that becomes so infectious that they are just so unbelievably attractive to everybody else. Um, so I really relate to that kind of reclaiming your own self-love and, and things. Did you find um, assistance from other like role models or anything, or was it really just an instinctual type of a coming back to yourself and finding and rediscovering that? That's such a good question. I think, um, sure, I was inspired by other people. Um, I mean, there's a whole like Instagram is an amazing place to find, not inspiration along the idea of self-love like I remember the first time I was seeing the first time I saw other women in bigger bodies like being happy in their bodies like that blew my mind and that was a step towards self-love the um my friend um Pia she goes by mixed fat chick on there um she's taught me a lot um another one was Mumu Mansion um who's a friend of mine like they 
they did like so much. She does like a lot of like digging work. And mm -hmm. she was one of the first people that I saw who was like, yeah, like I like pretty things and I like to feel good, but I also, I get that this is work. And um, then it was very much like doing my own thing and, and trying to figure out how self-love was going to work in my life. Um, and so magically, like um, I teach a work, I used to teach a workshop called self-love for witches. And um, one of the things. You want to come in and take it. <laughs> it's, um, it, yeah, it's available now on something else. Um, on Wild Essence Alchemy on that website. I have it on there. Because oh. I've been teaching the same thing. I was like, I wanted to move on. But in that, like I did like four or five versions of this course. And something that at the end, in my final version that I included was the idea of shadow work as it applies to self-love. Yeah. And, um, you know, shadow work, we talk about it magically, but, it, you know, it started with Carl Jung, um, Jung and um, he called it the unknown dark side of the personality. Mm -hmm. And I like to apply that to self-love as in, like, really look at yourself. Look at the dark and the ugly and the gritty and the shit that you hide from everybody else and get real comfortable with it. Yeah. And like, accept that as part of who you are, accept mm -hmm. that as part of where your power comes from. You don't like, there are things about us ourselves that we just don't like, but they're part of us. And if you can accept that, if you can wrap your arms around that as part of your fullness, you can then turn that to power. And that's where the work is, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, from my book, The Glam Witch, that I talk a lot about shadow work, specifically with Lilith. Lilith does really represent that yeah. shadowy, negative, dark side to our emotions, but also helps heal um, our shadow side by not suppressing it, but integrating it into our light halves. I mean, as you know, like it has to be light. I mean, there has to be darkness in order for there to be light to shine. There has to be dirt <laughs> if there's glitter I, I, I kind of think that that's maybe why you came up with that name I was going to ask you but, uh -huh, I think I figured it out um but I love what you said about that and looking at it from more of that shadow practice I do think that more and more witches and people in the magical community are starting to get into shadow work um I think for a while it was kind of along the lines of self-care and people were like no I'm not really because it started out more on a psychological term, but as right. you know, we work with all of these different magical things. Um, so I guess um, in trying to work through that shadowy negative side, I think, again, you know, looking at some of like the Instagram posts and stuff as you're heavily on it, we see all these different memes that talk about like, this is what you think that a spiritual enlightenment looks like. This is what you think that self-love looks like, but right. it's, real work. it's real work and it takes time and it can like really, really break you down. Um, do you have anything that you can share about like maybe one of the darker parts of it, like some, a personal experience that, you really dug into you with that shadow side of self-love? Um, yeah, I think, um, I'm trying to think what I feel like sharing. <laughs> uh, I think for, like my sexuality is definitely one of those in that um, I, there was a lot of shame around sex for me. Um, that I always liked it and I always wanted it and I had lots of it and um, right. But I was told that I wasn't supposed to like that. I was told, mm -hmm. um, you know, like even friends of mine would like shame me. Um, and, you know, we have enough things in our world that tell us um, that we're not good enough or that we're not, you know, like there's so much shame around sex. And as you probably know from Instagram, like that kind of glasses are crooked. That kind of led me to like um to really fall in love with like I do a lot of stuff around like vaginas and menstrual cycles. And because I think um I just I was holding on to so much shame. And there was a part of my life where I realized that I was giving away myself through sex instead of experiencing it or sharing an experience. And when I was able to start accepting pleasure 
after I did all that dirty work, um, like sex became a big part of my magical practice because I was able to slough off other people's opinions and shame. I found power there um, and I found beauty there and I found healing there. So that's, that's an example. I love that. And slightly similar with me. Um, I I was always in love with sex and pleasure and just craved it and craved it and craved it. And I was really looking for it and connecting it to romantic relationships. But my problem was, is that there was so much shame about whoring around and doing all of that kind of stuff promiscuously. And I was younger at the time that I would kind of jump into relationships um, for love, but, and like not really understand like the pleasure aspect of sex. And it just was, it was yeah. not good. And it wasn't until I had this massive breakup um, right around like, and, and sex was kind of like that dark period where I did kind of figure out that self love for me as well, where I became extremely promiscuous. I became um, just, I was so free and open and I loved exploring my sexuality more and being a little bit more um, out there with it and mm-hmm. getting into and, and being a part parts of prostitution and stuff to a degree, um, which was it, it, exciting for me. I really enjoyed it and it helped he- kind of, I think, heal that void. Um, and I know some people might think, well, you were just replacing that with sex, so it wasn't good, but I actually started to appreciate it more and so that I could kind of get out of my, get that out of my system, I guess, if you will. Um, but that was also around the time that I started to remove myself from friends. I started to lose people around me and kind of getting into that kind of dark underworld aspect of, of the self-love so that I could reemerge and reblossom and then enter a wonderful relationship. And um, the love is, is there. Sexuality is not necessarily the forefront of it anymore, um, of the relationship. And that's wonderful. Like, um, I, found, I was able to find and connect with myself so much more after going through that dark period of time. Um, and, uh, you know, looking at, man, I thought I had a question, but now I forgot it. <laughs> It'll come. It will come. Oh, so when it comes to, uh, I, I love that you touched on self-love and sexuality. Um, and we know sex magic is a, is a huge thing. Um, and we're starting to see it more and more. I know like even Cosmopolitan and mainstream magazines and stuff are starting to write articles about it. Um, has that become something that you've integrated a lot into your magical practice or? I do. Um, I, in fact, that in, in my workshop right after shadow work comes <clears throat> sex magic. Because I think that, that, like, you just made that connection. Like, there's a there's a real chain. Like, that's a chain effect. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, um, yes, it is. But only for me, I practice solo self-magic because my husband is not a practitioner. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it doesn't seem right. Um, like, absolutely together, I think that I could probably manifest more energy. But that, mm-hmm. I don't think that feels fair to him. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, there, so it's, it's mostly, it's like masturbation magic, which is super powerful. And I do it in front of a mirror. That's my thing, like yeah. bounce it back, like amplify it. And so that kind of, for me, I found that that does, this, it makes up for the partner that isn't there. Mm-hmm. Plus it's just super empowering to like- Totally. To watch yourself, it's amazing. I know, I love it. I personally, so I've done some mere sex magic work. I, um, I also have gotten like super, super hardcore into like the shock rubs and the crystal sex toys. Oh, um, really? I absolutely love, 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 love them. And there's so many different ver- variations and forms and things that you can use from like the wand um, to even like plugs that you can plug into yourself or even like the yoni eggs that you can hold on to um, and cock rings and different things like that. Like. I just love it and infusing crystal magic in, in with that kind of self-love sex stuff, especially with rose quartz, for example. I have this rose quartz sphere right in front of me because I was like, I need to get on my self-love here with you. Um, and uh, so I also talk a, a lot about how like masturbation and sexuality is such a form of self-love. You are literally loving yourself. Um, I think that it's a huge component. Um, and I love that you you go through that transition between the, like the, the shadow to 
sexuality because even with mine, the way that I look at it, you go from shadow to glamour where you start really owning and showing who it is that you are and at that point enriching yourself with that, that pure sexuality, um, which is just so fun to let it out. It's such a potent form of energy to use. It's readily available. Right. Um, it's really how it, lack of better terms, it, like it's such a great way to let the magic come from you. Right. Um, and using that rather than so many different, uh, and it sounds weird coming from me because I'm all about aesthetic and tools and having all these different things, but um, really downgrading and not necessarily using uh, like a huge ridiculous altar and all of that type of stuff right, right. Uh, and having that be more for a place of worship. Um, okay. So I am curious too, because you are um, such a positive role model on Instagram and Insta witch and all of that has have become such a trending thing. How do you feel about uh, this, how social media and witchcraft are intertwining at this point? Do you like how it's going? Do you, does it worry you in some ways? Um, I think it's kind of a controversial subject between uh, it is. in the world and right now. I know now. Um, there are opinions on, like on the far sides of, of each, yeah. you know, each opinion. Yeah. I, um, I will say about four or five years ago, I was super annoyed. Like, um, I was, because it's like the witchy aesthetic is so popular right now. Um, and it's beautiful. Of course it is. It's gorgeous. That's why they like it. But um, I got, I just found myself getting annoyed. Like you're in my space and you're uh, fake or false or, you know, like there's not an authenticity there. And a friend of mine, um, she was like, yeah, but what if one out of 10 of them finds her real calling or his or her real calling through this? Like, what if, the fashion or the aesthetic is the gateway to a spiritual awakening for somebody. And then I was like, fine, like, you go ahead and make a valid point and ruin my entire opinion if you want. And so now like, I love the hashtags and I love the community that it's, that's the real thing. You know, I'm a big fan of community because most people don't live in, like I live in Southern California. You can be whatever you want here. Nobody cares. Yeah. But a lot of people and a lot of the people that I, that I've worked with, live in like middle America or they live in other countries where it's just not safe to be out. And so I love that social media has given this safe space to people who might not otherwise have it or allow them to find community. Mm -hmm. So my opinion has really changed over the years. Um, now the annoying part is the people who want to tell everybody else how to practice. That makes me insane. Um, yeah. But that's just in life in general. Like don't tell people how to live. Like they're going to figure it out. So that's where I land on that. What about you? So I, for the most part, really, really love it. So I started to, you know, come out of the broom closet, if you will, with uh, like my social media presence and stuff, maybe like four years or so ago. I've been solitary practitioner for about 19 years at this point and always kept it to myself. Um, but then I saw so many other people using Instagram and Facebook as outlets to, to post and and to have that witchy aesthetic, and I loved it. Um, and I, like your friend, always thought and kind of defended it as, you know, this could be a gateway for someone who could end up doing something really amazing for our community later on. Um, but with all of the pluses, there is going to be some of the negatives. So some of the things that I found kind of annoying is the constant um, posting of your spell work. Because, you know, as you know, too, like with your spells, you, you kind of do them and you forget about them. The reason why is because you don't want negativity to come into your manifestation of it. Like, I mean, to so if you're knowing how it's, uh, number one, if you're taking time out of your spell to take a picture of what you're doing, are you really connecting with it, number one? Right. Number two, if you are taking photos of it and you're putting it online, you're allowing other people's ideas and thoughts to maybe cloud it up and, and strip it from actually achieving. But what I personally do is I'll post pictures of like my altar or before I do some kind of ritualistic worship for Lilith, because to me, that's more like worship related. That's getting the word, spreading the word and helping the community connect with her. I don't, I don't publicize any of the spells that I do or the spell work that I do unless it's done. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Now we can talk about it. Um, right. But I did just recently have for the first time where I got so annoyed, I had to like put my phone down before I threw it out the window at a, 
at a post, there's a group of um, uh, guys that I think are based here in Chicago and they like to call themselves the coven and they walk around and it's just videos of them walking to like Lady Gaga. And that's all fine and dandy, but you're not a real practitioner. You're not doing witchcraft. So please stop using our terminology. It, like it just like, <laughs> I was shocked at how irritated I got by it. I was like, block, delete, goodbye. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and frustrate myself looking at your ridiculousness. Right. But I do love how, you know, there are so many, how, how social media has been able to connect us in so many different ways and how visualization, how the visual representation of things um, can just spread like some of that inspiration, like you had mentioned before too, kind of coming into yourself, finding that inspiration from online. I mean, I am sure you like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, for example, or just the new version of Queer Eye with yeah. John as being as avant-garde and, and gender fluid in his fashion has also been inspiring to me to finally be like, oh my God, I'm finally going to wear heels. I'm going to buy my first pair of heels and I'm going to love doing it. And I do. Uh, so there's a toss up between the two. Well, and it, I think that's social media in general, isn't it? Like, yes. We have to decide does the good outweigh the bad? Like mm -hmm. that's... Yeah, that's just where we're, we've landed with. So use your power for good and not for evil. Like, and that's what I try and do as best I can. And another big thing that I talk about with social media is to not continuously engage in stupid stuff oh, or that. things that make you frustrated, like posting negative things or videos of things that are going to be like blood curdlingly awful. It's yeah. like, you're just, you, you might not get it, but you are contributing to it. You're spreading the agenda of that hate and that negativity right. and even for example like uh, with our president for example you know so many people want to talk about how much they don't like him but I always go back to thinking about Lilith for example because she survived for centuries <laughs> based upon people's hatred for her and she was inadvertently worshipped through that hatred, which works because she was scapegoated for so long and, you know, is such a powerful source to go by. But ultimately, every time I see people that are, are continuously talking about these things, I'm like, you're just worshipping it. You're just adding it on. Absolutely. Yeah. Practicing self-love. <laughs> it's so true. I, I do my, like, I don't, now we're kind of getting into, like, that reminds me, like, of like the you know the love and light versus the shadow like yeah. you can't be a love and light either like there's both and so but I think that we can acknowledge that mm -hmm. there's a lot of awful things happening and we can share our experiences and opinions on that but what we don't need to do is shove it down people's throats yeah. and like we can I choose to not do politics on my social media for Thank that you. reason like I'm not Sure, we can sit and we could have a multi hour long conversation about it if you really want to talk about it. But mm -hmm. that space for me is about joy what? and right and, and spreading it, getting it, finding it like that. That's mm -hmm. what that's there for. For me, I don't, I don't understand why people would actively invest their time on the things that they hate. Yes. Like, and it's a passive hate, it's not like I hate this. And so instead of posting on social media that I hate it, I'm going to go out and do something. I'm going to create change. Share that. Exactly. Be a change maker and share that. Um, yeah. And, and I think too, and you definitely get it because you're doing it. But like, that's one of the reasons why I do post like selfies of me all dressed up and fun mm -hmm. of what I'm doing because it's just a little snapshot in between the mess of everything else that people are scrolling through. To be like, oh my gosh, here's something fun and here's something inspiring. Um, but I love what you had just mentioned too. And it was something I wanted to talk about earlier about the love and light, and like the fluffiness. Because I think a lot of times people will look at self-love as like that fluffy new age term that's been passed around more times than the sage stick at a full moon circle. <laughs> it's just always like out there in your face and just kumbaya and love and light and la 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 but like again real self-love is not all about what you love of like that nice part about yourself you have to get down to the real nitty-gritty and the work of it which is disgusting and dirty and nasty and raw and primal and love it love that just as much as you love the, the positive but ultimately like the love and light 
like light blinds you. It blinds you from seeing the messages that are really there. And then, so I usually try to like connect it to the moon, for example, like if, if your darkness and your shadow self is, is the night, then the moon is that good stuff that's helping guide you through navigating it. Yeah, I think um, I was a loving light person. I think because I needed it so much. Like mm. I openly share that I have bipolar disorder, and um, you know, like yeah, in the beginning, not the beginning, because I kind of dipped in and out of my my witchy self from my teens through forty. Like I was like, am I? Am I? Not? I didn't know. So when I came back into my practice, I had been in a very dark time. And I needed love and light. And so I created that space for myself. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, after I felt safe, then I started looking for more. And that's where the shadow work came in. And and it's the shadows that make things interesting in life, right? Like, Mm -hmm. they add depth and value. And I have actually this, I hope it shows up. Um, This is, I I talk about self-love a lot. And I talk about my dream home. Is it backwards? Um, Yes, but we'll figure it out. Okay, I printed it backwards because I usually like it usually shows up backwards when I teach. But the idea is at the basis of all of it, of this is my house of self love, is self respect. You have to start there. Like that's the foundation. You can't start the roof is self care and self love, and that's super fun. But mm-hmm. start with a foundation of self respect, that shadow work. Dig in there, figure out who are you, and and then on the sides I've got um like because it's backwards and I can't even read my own stuff self-awareness right so self-awareness and self-acceptance so like that's the foundation figure that shit out and then do your beautiful roof with sprinkles and all the good fun stuff but and the the pictures like you and I both do this a lot like there's a lot of like my glamour is very different from your glamour my glamour is like very earthy and then I like I, I love all of this if I put it on, it would not look authentic. Like on you, it's absolutely 100% authentic. And I just saw the picture that you posted on Instagram, by the way, while we were in the middle. I was like, what? But it is it is a bold statement, in my opinion, for a 44-year-old naturally gray fat woman to be like, I am fucking fabulous. Like that is a, that's a thing. And it is a bold statement. For a beautiful man to wear his glorious pink robe and his lip gloss and his glam earring and to be like, this is me and I own this shit. And that's where power can live. It's that is its own magic. And like that's glamour magic is it doesn't I think when people think of glamour magic, they have they think of the craft. Like I can't change my eye color. I know. And that's what I talk about all the time too. I'm like, okay, so we've all heard of glamour because we've all watched the craft where some girls right. over them and they're like, Ooh. I'm blonde now, but no, you <laughs> and, and get colored. Like, that's just how it is. Um, but yeah, I think glamour magic is definitely something that is underrated, number one. Or other yeah. people are like, no, whatever, that's nothing. That's just like clothes. But, you know, everything that we do in life is, is a little ritual. And there's a little recipe for every little thing that we're doing. And if you're infusing it with your energy and you're really, really going to town with it, then go for it. Now, I don't do this all the time. I have a day job and I have time to go out and get groceries. And I, my glamour is a backwards baseball hat and some sweats, (laughs) but it's, I love being able to dress according to whatever it is that I'm going to be doing for the day. Like every single day is an opportunity to put on a costume and think, who am I going to be today? What is my persona going to be today? Um, and I love how you talked about our differences in glamour, like you being the earthy one. And like, it just is so true because I see all these wonderful pictures of like where you are and everything that you're doing. And then I'm like this city witch that's like electric. Yeah. All of pulling in all of the, the city type of magic glamour. Um, but I just love that too, because so many people think that glamour has to be one specific thing, but it's, it is what you make it. And I think a good chunk of glamour comes from self-love to be able to hone in on what aspects of yourself you love enough that you want to put out there to the other world to help maybe blind the stuff that you don't like about yourself. Yeah. And I think glamour magic, honestly, like, couldn't it be as simple as washing your face and intentionally moisturizing your skin? And as you're doing it, 
you're dedicating that moment to yourself. You're dedicating your energy. And like, honestly, like then when you, like you will glow that entire day. Yes. And so like you said, it's intention and, and that intention is everything. Everything. Even like if you're, for example, if you have really, really dry hands, like the winter here has been rough, like I'm, my hands get pretty dry. And so I moisturize them with a lotion and, or even hand oil and different things like that. And as I do, I really massage it in and I'm like, heal, 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 kiss my hands, kiss them, yeah. heal love in order for them to restore and regenerate that way. Mm -hmm. so all parts of glamour, all parts of self-love, all of that fun stuff. Now, you also, I know, are really, really big into herbs and are is so herbal. How have you integrated um, your herbal practice into your self-love practice? Um, well, I think part of it, the biggest part of it is the self-care component of self-love and, um, nourishment is self-love. It is self-care. So, um, I don't know, maybe five, four or five years ago, I made a decision to start caring for myself and it wasn't a magical decision. It was a life decision. Like I had spent, I just had never cared about myself. And so I wanted to know like what would happen if I were to actually nourish myself and then define what nourishment means. And certainly that for me, that came down to the kinds of foods that I was eating, the way I was preparing them, the, what I was putting in my body. And then as my herbal journey has, has moved on, I've learned how to care for myself and nourish myself in that respect. And so um, I, I think, you know, realizing something as, as foundational as that we are all walking around incredibly mineral deficient and making the choice and mineral deficiency will lend itself to mental health problems like that. So mm -hmm. realizing that I needed to get more minerals in my body and then finding the herbs that could do that. And so it's really nitty gritty kind of what, what a lot of people would find really boring for me uh, or, you know, for them, it, it, for them, they're like, I don't give, I, I don't care. But for me, like preparing a cup of tea, Mm -hmm. is a ritual and I'm not a ritual person I'm a very mundane witch mm -hmm. but there is ritual to that there is ritual to making the tea there yeah. is ritual like every you know I'm sure you see when I make tea like I get my hands in there and I think about what I want this tea to be as I make it and so every time I drink it it's that same process and so like I always stir my cups 13 times clockwise and then I make a pentagram in it with my spoon before I drink so it's a blessing and so you can take something as, as earthly as plants and mm -hmm. elevate it to a spiritual place with intention. I love that. I was actually just talking with, in one of the previous episodes, Tanya, about cooking magic and brewing teas and using herbs and stuff. I'm curious too, when you do that, do you use temperature for um, your, like to integrate in, into your intention. For example, like I, I personally, like if I'm making a tea or a brew or something, if I was doing it more like with the waxing moon and I wanted to bring something to me, I would use a hot tea because hot stimulates, it's faster, it's warm, it picks things up. And then like, if it's something to remove, I do more of a cool tea um, or a cooler brew because that's, that's colder, it's pushing away like removal. Um, do you work with that at all in, in some of your work? No, um, because um, I'm a nerdy herbalist. And so the temperatures that I use are about the components of the plant. And some plants need cold and some plants need hot. Like, so that's where I'm coming at it from. So, But I, what I might is for some plants, some plants you will extract different elements if you use hot or cold. And so in that respect, I might say um, I need soothing. And so I might do like a cold infusion of like marshmallow or linden or um, my brain is going mushy right now. Um, in, in which case, so that's kind of going to bring like a cooling healing. But n so no, not in, not in that magical respect because it's, the plants need different temperatures more than I do. I like that. Didn't necessarily know that. So that's really good information. Um, do you have, so are there specific herbs that are kind of like your go-to for self-love? Um, well, I would, yes and no. If you were to Google herbs for self-love, there would be a long list. Yeah. Um, there would be several long lists because it's very personal. And so I think part of it will depend on um, 
what aspect of self-love you're looking for, where you're at today. Um, like, do you need to heal first or are you already in a place of self-love and you need to indulge? So there's, but like some basic ones, I mean, Rose, everybody thinks of Rose when they think of self-love and Rose has a beautiful, um, uplifting energy that it brings for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, for me personally, Tulsi is one of my favorite herbs. Tulsi is um, delicious, first off, which is great because so many of our medicinal herbs don't taste good. But, so Tulsi is yummy. Heard that one. I have to check that one out. Oh, it's one of my favorite plants in the entire world. It's incredibly medicinal, but it also is um, it's a natural antidepressant, natural anti-anxiety, and it's what we call an exhilarant. So, And when we say an exhilarant, it's not a stimulant, but it lifts the heart. And so Tulsi for me is a really big one chamomile so if you needed soothing right like so if you were still in your healing phases you might reach for chamomile um lavender is one that a lot of people go to but it doesn't speak to me personally in that way but for a lot of people it does and, and another two would be um the herbs hawthorn and linden hawthorn has a a long history of, of having an affinity for the heart both physiologically and psychologically emotionally it's also an exhilarant so it lifts the heart and um, it creates this sense of safety. Um, if you have you ever seen a hawthorn tree? Um, I know I have. I can't picture it right this minute. But they have these giant thorns. They have these beautiful bright red berries mm -hmm. surrounded by these giant thorns. And there's a long story that goes along with it. But the idea is, is that over the over time, the tree developed those thorns to protect itself from giant ground sloths that would come and rip all the leaves off. They would just strip the and they would destroy them. So over time, the tree learned, I need to protect myself. And so it grew these giant spikes to save the berries. But what's interesting is they're, they're at crazy angles and they are um, spaced though. They're so widely spaced that if you come in carefully, if you're a little bird, if you're a deer, if you're a human coming in with caution, the fruit is still available but you have to come with caution. And so I love yeah. Hawthorne for that, for the heart. Like, so if you've been hurt, if you have a heartbreak, like people who are getting over something, it's a beautiful thing. And, and Linden is one that you do cold and it's um, really soothing and, and it goes really well with Hawthorne. Um, one of my favorite herbalists, Katya Swift calls it a hug and a mug. Like it's just that kind of like, mm, that feeling of just like, oh. And so those are probably my, my immediate thoughts. I love that. Those all sound delicious. I have to get like in on figuring those ones out because I'm mostly like rose. I'm very generic. Some rose and um, like I don't do so, so many like teas, teas, but I'll do a lot of like baths. So ritual baths and stuff with different herbs and components. Um, rose is always a big one. Um, orchids. If I have like uh, if one of these orchid yeah. like stalks auto, like accidentally falls off, that'll go in the tub with me, um, mm -hmm. and just different things like that. Jasmine, neroli, all of those lovely, lovely smelling flowers. Um, but those are easy. So as I love hearing about some of these different ones that I, I've not known about, and I'm sure other people that are watching haven't heard about either. Um, so let's see. One thing, so I don't know, we may have actually already covered this, but it's one thing that I've been asking all of the other witches that are coming on here too, is kind of like, what's your glam? So we had talked about like the earthy glam with you, but if you had any kind of, um, whether it's a product, something that you use, um, or just your overall aesthetic, what's your glam that makes you feel good uh, about yourself and just your overall aesthetic? Oh my gosh, um, it's earrings. Earrings. I love that. It's yeah. so funny when I put earrings on for this then. I was channeling you. <laughs> I love earrings. Big, the bigger the better. Handmade, mm -hmm. I prefer. Handmade by like a human. Um, yeah, I have that's my thing. Like if I really need to like feel it, I put on a big ass pair of earrings and I feel great. I love that. I love big necklaces. <laughs> big gaudy ass necklaces <laughs> i i would except they disappear in my time i used to wear them but like if i do it then it, it's like competing i love your big ass necklace it's gorgeous thank you you know and that's another thing too because i have a good chunk of tattoos and i know you do too how do you feel about tattooing um as a form of self-love um 
I think that there is something to that. I never got a tattoo. <laughs> well, actually, the tattoo on my back is almost a self-portrait. <laughs> so it's uh, when I look at it now, I'm like, oh, my God, I was so full of myself. But also, I was so full of myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think there's something like when I tattooed my I was always very self-conscious about my arms. I've always had big arms. I always, like they were just from the like from the time I was a teenager, my arms were just big. And so I would never I wore I was one of those girls who would wear like sweaters and hoodies in the summer because I didn't want people to look at my arms. And then um, I got my first arm tattoo. I think it was this one. It was my Mary Magdalene. And I love it. Suddenly I like my arms felt beautiful. And so I haven't done the insides of my arms yet because I went and had kids and they eat up all the money. But I will one day. And I almost like, I will, I don't wear sleeves hardly ever unless it's actually cold. And they, the tattoos did that for me in that respect. Like, I love that. I can definitely see that too. Like, cause I know, like I, I have this big one that's on my chest and I have ones on my arms and stuff too. And these aren't necessarily parts of my body that I always necessarily loved, but because I have them there now, I'm kind of like, I need to show it off. So it right. kind of gives me that strength to do that. And then even just the whole idea of getting a tattoo, you know, you're putting this beautiful piece of work on you that's lovely, but yeah. in order to get it, you go through this painful like process that can be a ritual. And the majority of all of my tattoos, and I'm pretty sure all of them are all in some way linked to my spirituality. So every time I've gotten one, it's been kind of a little like ritual thing, or it's been because something big happened. Um, so I wanted to dedicate that and show that love on my body as a decoration or an ornament. Um, but I think that's something too that not so many people talk about in connection to self-love or even glamour. Cause it's like, if you really want to amplify a feeling or an energy, put that sigil, put that symbol on you, put your favorite flower or something to just kind of really stand out on your body in a permanent way. Do you know who I'm um, Who? Tess Holiday. She used to go by Tess Munster. I don't think so. She's a plus size model. She's probably the most famous plus size model um, of our time, maybe ever. She's amazing. And she oh. um, she has very big arms and very big legs. And I remember she wrote a couple of years ago, she had had a couple of leg tattoos. And she had said like she had always been uncomfortable with them. And then she just kept getting more and more tattoos on them because she was like adorning herself. And she was like, that was a, even for me and I was like holy shit like that's so smart I had never thought of it that way really and so it's it can be powerful I wish I'd made some better choices in my early years but what are you gonna do yeah I get that way too I'm kind of like mm, I like this tattoo but I wish I didn't get it just as soon as I did it could have mm. So. Yeah, I've covered one up so far. And like, I, I wish I had. Do you ever dream about having like a magic eraser? Yes. I don't want to get the laser stuff. I'm never going to do that. But if I could just boop, 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 and then reduce a few things. I would love that. Yes. True. True that. Um, okay, cool. So I guess in kind of closing, um, do you have anything that you want to share with people? Like anything new and upcoming that you have going on or where people can uh, follow you, all that good stuff? Well, sure. They can follow me. I'm at Glitter in the Dirt. My um, my herbalist account is at Big and Feather Shop, um, where I make some pretty fabulous teas. And um, actually, yesterday I just made another batch of electuaries. So I make I put stuff up there. I just reopened because I was closed for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, if anybody wants to look into any of my stuff, where I um, oh well, and I teach. So um, that's, I do, I'm doing herbal mentorships now. So um, people can go to my website, which is the twigandfeather.com and they can look into that. And it's a 12 month program, 36 herbs. It's like a whole thing. And um, yeah. And, and then my pre-recorded stuff is um, online at Wild Essence Alchemy. Um, you can, if you look that up, there's like a whole course called, oh my God, what did we call it? The Essence of Magic. And um, everything that I've ever written, everything I've ever taught is in there. I love that. And that's what the um, self-love course is, right? Yes. Perfect. Because I'm sure some people will want to check that out. Great. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, well, I'm so excited to have had this opportunity to talk to you and also just have it be our first time actually talking face to face. Right? Ever. How has it taken this long? I know. I forgot to mention that earlier on. It's like, because we're so used to typey, typey, type, or I am at least. No, yeah. We've known each other for years and this is our first official conversation. I love that. I would be doing that with a couple of people. It's like a great opportunity now that we're in quarantine to connect with people across the board and kind and of start. I love this thing that you're doing. I love you started this project. It's going to be amazing. I want to watch all of them. Yay! All right, darling. Well, you have a wonderful and fabulous day, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.